Okay, in this video I'm going to go through how to sketch, do a really, really rough sketch of your logarithmic functions. All right, um, not necessarily going to be perfect, but the point is as long as you know where it's been translated across or around the coordinate plane, then it will be helpful sometimes to just be able to do a rough sketch. Um, okay, so over here I have our base logarithmic functions. All right, in this graph right here, I've done the uh, log of x base b, where b would be greater than 1. So as long as my base is greater than 1, all right, then I know my graph is going to go through 1, 0, and it's going to go up and to the right. Down here it is hugging the y-axis, which makes the y-axis a vertical asymptote. All right, and then since I am doing a rough sketch, you know, I don't really know exactly, you know, the steepness or the angle at which it goes up. Okay, but rough enough sketch that I am good there. Now, I know that as long as my base is greater than 1, I know that um, I'm going to go through the point 1, 0 because that has to do with going back and forth between logarithmic and ex um, exponential form. All right, you've got that law of exponents that says any number raised to the 0 power is always 1. All right, and that has to fit here so that our logarithmic um, graph is going to go through 1, 0 right there. All right, now for a base graph, if I take this equation log of x base b and I make that base a number in between 0 and 1, so a fraction. The only thing that it's going to do to the graph, it's still going to go through 1, 0, but it's just going to kind of flip it. It's going to hug that y-axis up here as a vertical asymptote at the top and then come down and to the right there. Okay, so there's my two basic graphs. You're going to want to memorize that when the base is greater than 1, it hugs the vertical asymptote at the bottom and goes up and then when that base is in between 0 and 1 it hugs the vertical asymptote at the top and then comes down. Alright, now basic shifting rules um, that apply not only to your logarithmic functions but to all of your functions. Alright, if you have a number on the inside of that function then you can shift opposite left or right. You can shift your graph opposite left or right. If you've got a number on the outside, that tells you how the graph is going to shift up or down. Okay, now I did throw some negatives in here. A negative in front of our log here is going to, and I've just got reflex up and down, because um, it's really hard to, to do that if you think, okay, this is my base um, graph, and then a negative just kind of flips it up and down. It's kind of hard to describe. All right, a negative on the inside there will reflect across your vertical asymptote left to right. Okay, so here's your vertical asymptote. All right, that graph then would just be reflected left to right. Okay, um, so knowing your basic shifting here, then that's going to be how we're going to do our sketches. Okay, now in reference to this shifting opposite left or right or same up or down, the point that I'm going to be shifting, I'm going to be shifting the point that goes through 1, 0 on both of those graphs. So that's the point that I'm actually going to be shifting. All right, and then if you notice the vertical asymptote is 1 to the left of that point. All right, the vertical asymptote is 1 left to that point. So when I shift this point, when I start to shift these and do some examples, I am also going to shift the vertical asymptote, and I'm going to make sure that it is exactly 1 to the left of that point that I'm going to shift. Okay, so with that being said, let's work through about three examples where we sketch them. Okay, so like I said, it's just a sketch. It is just a rough sketch. We are not trying to get an accurate graph here. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on each one of these graphs, I am going to start, and I'm going to do it in red, I'm going to start with a point at 1, 0. All right, and I put that in red. Uh, hopefully it's showing up on the video that that's red because that point is not part of the graph that I am getting ready to sketch. That's just what I'm going to use to go through my shifting right here. Okay, now this is on the inside of the function, so then I need to shift opposite left or right from what I see. So I see a positive 2, which tells me I'm going to shift left 2. So I'm going to take that point right there, which is just my, like my guide point that's going to tell me how to shift this, and I'm going to shift it 2 to the left. So there's 1, 2. That's going to put it going through negative 1, 0. All right, now not only did that point shift left 2, but the vertical asymptote of this log function also shifted. It is always 1 to the left of my point. So right there at negative 2 then is going to be my vertical asymptote, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in. 
All right, and then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to take a look at that base. That base is a number bigger than one. That tells me that it's going to hug my vertical asymptote at the bottom and then go up and to the right, even though that's a little crooked there. So it's going to hug that vertical asymptote really close down here. It's going to go through that point and then up and to the right. All right, now, like I said, um, really rough sketch. I don't know exactly you know how high and how sharp that's going to go, but at least I know now what this graph has done. It has shifted or translated to the left too. All right, now on this one, this has got not only shifting left or right, but this also has shifting up and down as well. So again, I am going to start with a point at one zero. All right, but keeping in mind, I'm putting it in red because that red dot right there is not part of that function right there. Same thing with here. This red dot is not part of the, the function that I am sketching. I'm just using it as a reference point so that I can do my moving around. All right, now I'm going to look right inside here. This minus 2 is on the inside of the function, so I shift opposite left or right, so that means I'm going to go right 2 from this spot right here. All right, now this plus 3 then tells me that I'm going to shift the same up or down. So I see a minus three, that means I'm gonna go down three. So this is going to the right two, and then it's gonna go down three, okay? So I'm gonna take that point that is at one zero, and that's what I'm going to move. So I'm gonna to go to the right two, and then I'm gonna go down three. So to the right two, down three, and that's where my point is gonna go, all right? Now, not only did my point shift, but that vertical asymptote is going with it as well. So since this point is sitting right here at three, that means my vertical asymptote has to be one to the left. So my vertical asymptote has got to go through two. Hopefully I can get this one a little bit more straight. All right, so there's my vertical asymptote and it got shifted as well. All right, now I'm gonna come back up here. I'm gonna take a look at that base. The base is a three, which is a number bigger than one. So I know it's gonna hug the vertical asymptote down here low and then go up and to the right. And since it is a rough sketch, you know, whether or not, you know, we don't know. We don't know if it's gonna go up sh quickly, shortly, really quick here at that point. All right, but that's not what I'm after here. I'm just after, you know, it shifted about where is it at in my, my coordinate plane, and then I have the general shape right there. All right, now for our last example, okay, again, you're going to look at the inside of the function. That tells me opposite left or right, so I see a plus three, so that means I'm gonna to go to the left three, and then I'm gonna come out here. This number's on the outside of the function. It's a negative two, so that means I am going to go down two. All right, now what is moving? Okay, the point, the imaginary point that I'm gonna put on my graph at one zero, all right, as my starting point, which will not be part of the actual graph, but that's what I'm gonna shift. So I'm going to shift this one two to the left, Okay, or I'm sorry, three to the left and then two down. All right, so one, two, three left, and then two down. So three left, two down, puts my point right here. Okay, now not only did the point shift, but the vertical asymptote that goes with the log function also shift. It is also to always one to the left, so negative one, negative two. That puts my vertical asymptote going through negative three. All right, now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to take a look at that base. And that base is a one-third. That is a number in between zero and one. So that means instead of hugging my vertical asymptote down here and coming up and to the right, I'm going to hug up here to the top, and I'm going to come down and go through it, making sure that I go through that point right there. All right, and again, just remembering that that red dot that I initially put on the graph is not part of this logarithmic function, okay? All right, so just um, three quick little um, sketches of logarithmic functions, how they shift around the uh, coordinate plane, and that can be very helpful. Now, while we're also talking about um, logarithmic functions, now is a really good time to just review or take a look at the fact that um, the logarithmic function and the exponential function are inverses of each other. All right, so what I've done is I've just drawn a couple pictures here. This picture on the left is pretty much the most important one because these are the two that you're going to work with the most. All right, as you recall, the exponential graph, all right, goes through 0, 1 when the base is greater than 1. I should note, when the base is greater than 1, my exponential function, all exponential functions go through 0, 1. 
all right, and go up and to the right. All right, now, the logarithmic function, when my base is greater than 1, all logarithmic functions go through that, that haven't been shifted, go through 1, 0. All right, it hugs, has a vertical asymptote down here along the y-axis and goes like this. All right, now, inverses are reflections over the y equals x line. So I've got the y over x line on here, and I've got the exponential function here and the logarithmic function here showing that they are uh, reflections of each other over that y equals x line. So it's just kind of good since you're doing the graphs and probably at this point the, you're working with logarithmic functions and what their graphs look like you have probably already previously looked at the exponential function as well. Now this picture on the right less common however it still applies when my base is in between 0 and 1 that's when I have that fractional base alright it just flips the graphs so that they hug their asymptote in a different spot. All right, so here my exponential function is again going through 0, 1, okay, and with a fractional base would look like this, all right, kind of on the lines of an exponential decay type problem, all right, and then their y equals x line is right there, so if I were to reflect that exponential equation over that line, I would get the logarithmic function where the base again is in between 0, 1, hugging up here and going through 1, 0. All right, so a couple of pictures that just kind of let you easily see that the logarithmic function and the exponential function are inverses of each other. Okay, so um, sketching logarithmic functions and then verifying that the exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses. Um, definitely thanks for watching. If you like the video, um, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.